Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models. In this episode of Talking Models, I want to talk about judging at model competitions. I recently attended the second biggest model show in Australia that's held here in South Queensland each year as part of the Queensland Model and Hobbies Expo, or QMHE. This show had almost every model retailer in Queensland, plus some interstate traders, nearly a dozen model clubs with their displays, and of course, the annual Queensland Model Competition, which had just shy of 500 entries across 30 plus categories. Now I was able to enter 16 of the models I brought, I actually brought 17, there's a tale in that I'll tell you a bit later, and for the first time since I started attending QMHG about 7 or so years ago, I finally put my hand up to do the judging. Normally I don't do this because I just don't have the chance, it's held on the Saturday night, and I live nearly 3 hours drive from the show, but this year, my wife, she insisted I stay down there for the weekend, so I was able to have quite a relaxing two-day weekend with only one trip there on the Saturday and then back on the Sunday evening. So what is it about judging that gets a lot of modelers on edge and, you know, sometimes ready to explode about how unfair it is? Well, I want to share my experience and I want to contrast that with some other modelers, particularly those in the US and the UK, compared to the more, say, liberal, open system that they use in Europe. So let's dive straight in. First of all, I really want you to go and watch my other Talking Models segment on competitions. Now in that talk, I opined that you should treat a model competition more like an art show, not like a sports event where there's big winners and losers. It's more of an experience, not a defined result. And that's where judging comes in, an experience that would benefit anyone, whether you just want to improve your modeling skills or you just want to know how do other modelers do it how do they approach their subject, but also to get a really, really close view of particular models and then a big macro view of what each hobby is all about. I heartily recommend it. You've got to do it. So here's my experience on that weekend. Now, as a rookie, a newbie, I was paired with two master aircraft modelers, Michael Drover and Gary Heinemann. These two chaps, they're gold-winning uh, master aircraft and figure modelers for Gary and are indeed true gentlemen. They're really great ambassadors for our hobby. They took me under their wing, pun intended, <laughs> and we got straight into it. And here is where having those extra sets of eyes that are literally inches away from a model, and yes, we used a torch, show up both the faults and the skills that are just not noticeable when you're just a passive observer behind the ropes uh, or indeed a competitor wondering, hey, why did my model, why didn't mine place? We judged about five or six categories, I, I think I can remember rightly, some mainly aircraft, but also trucks, figures, a few other things. Not all the aircraft, because uh, being judges, you're not allowed to judge your own uh, aircraft, and we're all modelers. Uh, so we had entries in various large and small scale, uh, medium scale categories. So we're able to tiptoe around the other judging teams who are assessing our own entries. Now, this process needs a little bit of explanation. While the QMHE is supported by the local IPMS club and community, the state competition doesn't necessarily follow strict IPMS rules that you might be familiar with, say, in the United States or in the United Kingdom. The focus is not solely on construction, although it is a major part of it, but other elements later. It's, it's about a total package approach. You know, what's the intent of the modeler? What's the total skill set that they're bringing to their finished model? We didn't use a point system. In fact, it was just the three of us, uh, you know, comparing notes with each other and talking back and forth. And it was really about looking at the total four or five major categories to see where that cream rises to the top. So yes, construction was a major one, of course, but there's also painting. There's also weathering. There's also things like how well the markings or how well are the decals being applied? Uh, how well are the weapons and accessories being constructed and painted and weathered and so forth? Uh, and then the overall intent, like what, what are they trying to do? So let's have an example. Say an aircraft had a flawless build, and there was only one of those, so it's not the perfect example. Let's say it only had one or two very minor problems. Yet the paintwork was just, you know, not that great. A bit flat, a bit sort of not smooth in some bits and just sort of monotone and a bit, eh. And some of the decals had some, you know, visible carrier film on them. Well, that aircraft would not score as well as another one that had 
you know, one or two very visible but, you know, minor construction faults. Maybe they've got a slightly crooked wheel. Maybe there's a slight ghost seam somewhere else. But if they had a smooth paint job and their decals just, you know, disappeared into the paintwork and it looked, you know, very good finish, that would score further than the so-called perfectly constructed model. And I think that's much more fair. See, models were only really eliminated in this process uh, when we decided placements. So, you know, the, the so-called top three, when the sum of all those faults across all of the categories exceeded that of its peers. So if there's too many, if there's too many weathering problems, too many painting problems, we would just push that one to the side and, and then you'd get the top three, four, five or so. And here is where this hybrid open system that they used comes into play. Uh, sometimes, with the chief judges okay, we were able to give several gold, silver, bronze, or highly commended awards in one category if we thought the skill levels were more comparable beyond just the three top models. And there were four or five or even more that were rightly equal. So once we had decided on our places, we had to justify our process to the chief judge, who sometimes he would point out a few things we may have missed, or we had to clarify why we chose one over the other. Here is where the judge experience counts. As all three of us were, quite rightly, high-level aircraft modelers, we knew when something was wrong uh, when judging the aircraft categories. We knew to pick out the small things here and there that weren't quite right. And luckily, this came into play because when we did figures, Gary is a, a medal-winning figure painter, and he um, showed Mick and I the nuances involved in those categories. So in a perfect world, it would be great to have high-level judges only going over their categories of expertise. But, you know, you know, time and that talent pool is limited. Although we were very lucky this time around with an abundance of judges. It didn't take that long to do the whole competition. We even all helped together at the end to judge the absolutely superlative figure category. There were so many entries. Talk about that in a minute. I learned so much from Gary and Mick. I picked up things and other people's models that I wouldn't necessarily have seen or even considered for my own without closer inspection. There were just these, you know, these finer things that raise a model to that next level. For example, a wash that pools too much in a hinge or too little, it disappears into a panel line. A canopy that's, you know, has just a few little minor glue marks that you could see close up. Ghost seams on drop tanks or anything that had two halves put together. Deckle edges that weren't blended into the paintwork just right. Slight runs or some dusty paint in tight spaces uh, where your airbrushing's not quite up to par. Super glue marks showing on your photo etch or, you know, no consistency in your gloss, semi-gloss matte coats. And of course, you know, sometimes the lack of references, like when your build has some unique points that could confuse a judge, just simply adding in a few notes, say, hey, this is the reason why the static discharges on my aircraft are bent, or this is the reason why the some wheels are muddy, some aren't. Because the judges need help. They need to know what is your intent here? What are you trying to do? So personally for me, the judging process, that was the best part of attending that show. I'll talk shortly about how I went with my medals and places, and I did really well, but for me, the judging was far and above the best thing I actually did because I learned so much getting behind the scenes. I mean, I looked at some truly stupendous craftsmanship and artistry, particularly the figures. They were just mind-blowing, but also an aircraft because I got to judge Eric Gallier's Hornet, which was literally flawless. It was amazing. So how would I improve the judging process? Well, it's a really hard question. And it's something I'm not sure I have the answer with. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a newbie at this. I'm a rookie. I've got some ideas. Look, there's some inherent faults with any judging process. We're all human. Well, most of us are. <laughs> we did miss a few things. Uh, we overlooked one model uh, because of, you know, and uh, just some errors that just pop up. It just happens, and it's this. It's really, really hard to fix it without a complete overhaul of the process, or a lot of time and resources put into it. I mean, I still contend that all model competitions should move away from the, you know, the cutthroat first, second, third only, you know, winners take all system and should adopt the European open gold, silver, bronze medal style. This works both ways as it eliminates the faults of overlooking those entries or denying awards to rightful efforts, but also when a category is underrepresented, so there's only one entry or two, or if the quality is just not there at all, then the winners, inverted commas, shouldn't automatically get a first, second, third. Sometimes only a bronze should be awarded. I mean, sometimes on the flip side, if there's an abundance of quality, then more golds and silvers should be awarded. This was perfectly shown in the QMHE figure categories. Uh, 
And to their credit, the chief judge and the and all the judges decided to award multiple medals for figures in particular. I think that's much more fair. That's this open system. It reflects what we're truly trying to do with the hobby, you know, in the future. We're trying to represent as many people as possible. This is not about participation medals. That's rubbish. Uh, it's it's encouraging everyone to enter and show their ability and awarding true talent. Like if you're good enough to get a bronze, you get a bronze, okay? You don't miss out and you never go in again. The other improvement I could see that could work depending on how people are open to technology is feedback. It would be great if say, while we're going around uh, the judging tables that we carry an iPad or a smartphone and you know using audio or video or auto dictation or something we just quickly say a few words about each model about where it needs improvement or why it didn't place or why it won see we also judged it was such a pleasure to judge the intermediate category these are the 13 to 18 year olds and i purposely found the youngsters at the medal ceremony and uh, i who entered their models and i spent a few minutes talking to each of them and gave them feedback on where they could improve and encouragement okay and they were absolutely delighted to hear this. I hadn't heard that before. And that was, again, another highlight of the show for me. So let's get down to brass tacks. <laughs> How did I go? Well, I brought 17 models. Remember, I haven't entered for two years, so it's quite a few. Although Danny Lapthorne, I think he had 28. But uh, that's because he was out of work. He's an airline pilot. And, you know, a lot of our airline industry is under a lot of stress. So the 17th that I wasn't able to enter, but I brought, was my cursed 148 scale Tamiya Messerschmitt 262. Now on the day, on Saturday morning, I could only find the base for it. I couldn't find the model. Um, I brought seven big plastic boxes with me and I rummaged through them over and over. They're filled with plastic bags for transportation. It's the method I use that means that there's no breakages, uh, but it means it's, it's bulk, okay? There's a lot of plastic bags there. And I spent nearly two hours that morning entering in my other 16 models, including some handling breakages that I did. You know, my tank girl, she fell off and the weapons fell off my Viper and I had to super glue them on. And I had to sort out my references, which was a pain for 16 separate models. And I just gave up. I couldn't find the bloody 262 anywhere. On the Sunday, when I was packing away, after the medal ceremony, I found it within two minutes. It was in the bottom of a bag. Uh, it's just stuck at the bottom of the biggest box. So next year, I'm just doing big models. Things I can't make, you know, can't, uh, can't lose. I eventually won five gold, which was great. And I got... Uh, seven other places that was a total of 12 medals so out of, out of those 16 i did extremely well uh, i knocked out most of the 148 aircraft categories for gold so i'm really happy about that but i also won the submarines with my revel u-boat that i did like three years ago and the helicopters with my academy viper and funnily enough apart from my wheels down p47 all my aircraft gold winners were wheels up and funnily enough i found out the real reason why I'm at a disadvantage with in-flight builds, it's not the inherent bias that um, you know judges have that don't like models in flight. It's because, well, you see, they're not allowed to pick up the aircraft models if they're parked on the ground, just in case they break them. So they only can only really inspect them from the side, you know, shine a torch on the intakes and have a look on the inside, but you can't see underneath. They're in full view when wheels up. So my construction finish underneath had to be near perfect or I'd get judged against the wheels down that they couldn't judge at all. So you see what I mean? I'm already on the back foot if I don't get it right. These other models, they could have had, you know, a massive centerline seam that they didn't bother cleaning up or glue marks putting the weapons on that you can't see from underneath. So my efforts in closing the wheel wells on those models and getting it right, just right, you know, a lot of uh, rescribing, filling in, you know, it pays off. It's extra work for sure, but it does pay off. So anyway, uh, I'll leave it there. This was such a great experience. I can't wait for next year to roll around again. I keep saying it, but I'll endeavor to get my CH-53E uh, Super Stallion finished. Anyway, thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of that about talking about judging at model competitions. What are your thoughts on judging? Uh, how have you found it over the years? I'm really looking forward to keep doing this again and again and learn more and more. Uh, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that sort of nonsense that we do at the end of the videos. And till next time, Cheers.